but you were under the radar because it was the Jordan Spieth show throughout. He was the defending champion. He'd built that, that huge lead, but you were going along. I mean, what was that like for you in terms of your feelings on that Sunday? Obviously, you've played very nicely the first three rounds, and you're going really nicely on the Sunday through the front nine. Yeah, um, it's it's such a special place, and I've, because I've watched it for so many years on television, you know where the pins are, you've seen the shots that Tigers hit and guys have hit in the past to win, uh, and it was it was one of them where they always say if you're within, you know, on the back nine on Sundays where everything happens, and round in Worcester, obviously a hell of a lot can change. There's water in every hole, the wind's swirling around, it was a particularly tough year, um, like five under one that year, uh, whereas you know sometimes it's 12, 15 under. Um, so I knew that there was, I knew that something could happen. What was going to happen was was unknown. But you split it down into like blocks of three. My thought was get to a main corner, unscathed, um, and then you can then really try and press in them middle two where the par fives are, and then see where you're at and uh, and carry on and. Um, Augusta's strange because there's no electronic scoreboards. So there's only a scoreboard every three or four holes. So you have absolutely no idea where you stand. Um, but you can hear, if anyone's ever been fortunate enough to go, you can hear noises from different parts of the golf course and you, you almost, you can tell what it is. That's a birdie, like roar, that's all, that's a, oh, you just made double. You know, you just hit it in water there. You can tell by people's reactions. And yeah, that back nine on Sunday, we'd got ourselves in a position where I was playing nice and I thought, we're in with a good chance here. I was two under after nine, looked at the leaderboard, and Jordan was two under after six. So we're still five behind. So I'm like, well, I was in solo second. I was playing with Westy. Um, Westy was two or three behind me. So I was like, well, this is, this is where you, this is what you practice for. This is, this is the position you want to be. You're a bit far back. But, you know, let's try and, let's try and hit some good golf shots, try and, you know, see if we can eke anything out of it. And, Fingers crossed he does something um, a bit silly, um, which we've all done. Well, yeah, but, uh, and here's something that I don't think gets properly recognized. So you birded 14. Spieth's gone to the turn with a five-shot lead. Yeah. He bogeys 10. Yeah. He bogeys 11, where there is a big scoreboard. Yep. You've yep. birded 14. His lead is now down to two as he stands on the 12th tee. Yeah, so we obviously can't, I don't know this. Like you say, you now look back and you can see it. But he might have done. He might have, yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've missed like a 12-footer on 15 for birdie, which was annoying because 15 is a real big, real big chance. But the point is, you'd put pressure on him, and he's put a couple in the water on yeah. 12 to make his 7, which yeah, so, so changed we, it all. Yeah, so we, we tapped in for par on, on 15, and like everyone was just, you can see him, hands on the head, and everyone's like, what's just happened? And I turn around. And you can see on the leaderboard, there's a massive one just right at the green on 15. And they changed it, and he made, yeah, he made seven, didn't he? Seven. And yeah. went from, uh, what did he go from, six to two, or whatever it Something was? Something like that. Uh, and I went, and I was still at four. Um, Westy had just chipped in for eagle for getting it all yeah. on 15. So it was, I mean, it was carnage. Like, you could, uh, again, because there's no electronic sport scoreboard, you don't know exactly where you are. All I know is what Westy was, and I now know what Jordan is. So all of a sudden you're leading. Yeah. I mean, it's it's obviously amazing that um, it's it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> but it is. It's you don't, you don't no one no one no one no one no one can no one can prepare you for for that. I mean, I actually think I'm quite lucky in the fact that it happened so late on on a Sunday for it being. I think if you had to sleep on a lead in a major, I think that's tough. The fact that I've, I've already, I'm already in, I'm already in it. I'm already playing. You're already in that mindset of, of playing golf and trying to make birdies. And because it happened so late, it didn't really give you time to mull anything over. I went down. I remember there's a back. I still go to it every day. There's a, there's a toilet at the back of 16, um, and I went for a pee. It, there's 40,000 people there, and it's obviously all of a sudden you're now leading Augusta. And it was the quietest, most peaceful 25 seconds. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm stood in there and, I'm, and my hands are shaking. Uh, <laughs> and you're wearing, 
You're wearing all white. Doesn't sound great, that does it? No. Let's just wind back 25 seconds. Um, but I'm in there and I say to myself, I said, Dan, this is what you practice, this is what you, this is what you do everything for. Five good swings. Five good swings. I mean, just try and break it down. Five good swings and see what happens. Um, well, the first of those and five. And fortunately enough, came out of the box, and the first one of them was, was, was pretty good, yeah, on 16. On 16. And if you ever look at it, it's worth just looking up on YouTube. I mean, this is the son of a vicar. You had the eyes of an assassin after that shot. You seriously did. You, you, you talking about carp diem, seizing the moment, you, you certainly did that, and that birdie there took you to five under par and gave you the outright lead. <coughs> yeah, Westy, Westy did it on the greens, three whacked. Westy all of a sudden dropped two back as well. So it was like a, all of a sudden from you're like just teetering up behind someone, all of a sudden you've actually stretched out quite a nice, quite a nice lead um, with two holes that aren't ridiculously difficult in terms of how Augusta is, but you know they've got to be played. You can still pick up and stuff, but yeah, they've got to be played well and um, managed to have an incredible up and down on the back of 17. That was incredible. Yeah. Uh, How tough was that, that chip? We were speaking about it earlier in there. It did, at the time, it didn't feel it. You're, you're so in the moment of, right, where I'm trying to pitch it here, it's going to do this, it's going to check, it's going to release down, it's breaking down, whatever it is, that it doesn't seem that difficult. Like, because you practice it over and over and over again, that's, it's what you should do. But, again, your heart's, I mean, it's your heart's at, 140, everything's going, but um, it was to be able to play it like that again just gives you the confidence. And again, to knock it to a, to a foot basically, so you've not got to think about having to hold a four foot if you say par or anything like that, was just just kind of gave you that little little moment of, of peacefulness knowing that you've only got one hole to go to, to not mess it up. And you didn't mess up that last hole either, which we've seen many a golfer do down the years. And I mean, it was a lovely approach in, wasn't it? It was the archetypal kind of regulation par four. Yeah, again, didn't feel like it, but <laughs> it, it is. I mean, when you look up there, I mean, the gap probably, it was probably between these two screens is what it feels like between the trees. So I'm looking and that gap's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. As to where at times you think, I'm not sure if a golf ball is gonna fit through there. Um, but yeah, as soon as it came off and you look up and you see it missing the trees, it's, Job one, done. No matter where it finishes, you've not, you've not made a, 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 a massive error straight off the tee. Um, and then, yeah, pushed the seven iron up into that right and bang, got a lovely little kick off the, off the push and then, yeah, trickled it down. And then, it, again, it was a, then it's a waiting game, isn't it? Again, because, we talk, again, I was on about anticlimax. It's not that it's, like, I've not hold anything. I've just coded it down and tapped it in. And then, I'm then obviously a nervous wreck for, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. um, while Jordan's obviously still got the holes to play where you can really make a score after he'd obviously messed up. But ladies and gentlemen, it was a five under par bogey three 67 in the final round of the Masters. <laughs> when, when, when people say Jordan Spieth lost the 2016 Masters, they, he, he didn't. This man here won it. And when that moment came, I mean, you, you'd been on the phone to, to think you were FaceTiming, you jumped into Smarty, and uh, I mean, there were just fantastic scenes for anyone who loves British golf. It must have been a, an, um, an in extraordinary feeling inside for you. Yeah, it was good. It was, I mean, it was, again, it was just surreal. I was trying to FaceTime Nick. She had family and friends at the house. I had obviously my pals there. My father-in-law was with us. Um, yeah, I mean, to be able to, shaking now you think about it it should be able to go back and relive it in your head and all the moments that happened in and around it it's uh, it's, it's it's insane to obviously think that you've done it um but yeah just um yeah, quite nice it's a privilege to be, to be able to do it yeah and then you and then well 